Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. My name is Desi. Today we'll be discussing the tragic case of Kendrick Johnson. Here's a brief summary of the Kendrick Johnson case. Kendrick Johnson was the youngest son of Kenneth and Jacqueline Johnson. He was ambitious. He was only 17 years old. He played football, basketball, and track at Loudoun High School in Georgia. On January 10th of 2013, Kendrick did not come home from school. His family reported him as missing. The next day, his body was found upside down in a gym wrestling mat. January 14th, the officials ruled his death was accidental. Authorities believe that since the wrestling mats were heavy, Kendrick went to take off his shoes. His shoe got stuck, he went down to reach, and couldn't get out. Kendrick suffocated. Kendrick's parents believe he was not murdered. His parents claim that Kendrick was almost the same size of the mat. That it would be very difficult for Kendrick to get stuck in the gym mat. Another thing to note is that there was an additional pair of shoes above his head. There was a blood in the gymnasium wall along with a random hoodie that had blood on it as well. None of these items were taken in as evidence. The blood in the gymnasium did not belong to Kendrick. The medical examiner was not called until five hours after Kendrick's body was found. Here are some questions about this case. Was his death accidental? Could Kendrick have gotten stuck in the mat and suffocated? With what evidence has been presented, it is very likely his death is accidental. I know his death was ruled accidental due to asphyxia, which could have happened with him getting stuck in the mat and suffocating. He could have very easily gotten stuck in it just trying to get the shoes out of the mat since the school was charging for lock rooms. Him and his friends were putting shoes in there. He could have went in to grab his shoes and everything and he could have lost grip on the mat or lost grip with his elbow and the mat could have easily rolled back up. He could have started panicking. He could have started taking his shoes off just to try and get himself out and in the end ended up suffocating and dying. Yeah, his death could have been accidental. I know it's hard to think that since his size that he would have been able to be suffocated by Matt, but anything really is possible. Even the strongest people, things can happen all the time. We don't really know what the events were leading up as, and those mats are pretty heavy from what I've heard, but it's still very possible that he could have went to reach and grab down one of his shoes and gotten stuck in the mat since he got stuck in the mat during a time where there was not really anybody known to be in the gymnasium. He wouldn't have been able to call out for help. Who did the blood in the gymnasium belong since it wasn't Kendrick's? Unfortunately, we do not know who the blood in the gymnasium belongs to. We do know that it was not Kendrick's blood, so that is definitely a question that needs to be answered. However, the blood is old and there wasn't any blood directly found on Kendrick's shoes or anything. It could have been old blood from possibly an injury that a kid sustained, someone hitting something. It could be anybody's blood. Like you said, it's not Kendrick's blood, so they can rule that out. And it wasn't any of the females since they did find bloody tissues in the bathroom and did test that against that blood sample. Still kind of a mystery as to who the blood belongs to. Why did cameras turn off when Kendrick walked in? Could the cameras have been tempered with? The cameras could be motion cameras, so maybe after a certain point when Kendrick walked in, he wa maybe walked too far off to the side and they just shut off, or maybe there is a fault in the system, or maybe the cameras just gave out at that point. Is it possible the cameras could have been tampered with? Yes. Does it seem a little suspicious? Yes. but. There's a multitude of reasons as to who happened. Yeah, I agree. There's multiple reasons why the camera could have turned off. It does seem suspicious that the cameras did turn off when Kendrick walked in. Someone could be hiding something potentially being foul play, but it could have also simply been something faulty or if they're motion cameras and he walked too far off, they wouldn't have catched 
Kendrick fought Brian a few days before and Brian was his bully. Brian's father was an FBI agent. He confronted Kendrick supposedly and told him that Kendrick should actually come to his house to fight Brian and that the fight was not fair. Could Brian's father be involved? It's very unlikely that Brian's father, an FBI agent, would be involved in this. Just because the fight was over a year old, his son had an alibi, he was at a wrestling match. There's really no reason for Brian's father to be involved. Same with Brian and his brother as well. I think it's a little weird that the parents and everybody else are pointing fingers at Brian and his brother and his father, but it's very unlikely that there's suspects in this case. Like I said, just because there's really no motive as well as to why they would kill him. Yeah, I think that somebody else could have jumped Kendrick, maybe, since you didn't mention that Brian and his brother and all of them were at a wrestling match during this situation, that it is nearly impossible for them to even be involved. People do go around and spread rumors to fuel up the fire since his death was possibly a freak accident. Many people, despite a death being a freak accident, want to believe that there is something else involved. That could be why people kept pointing fingers at Brian's father in that situation. Brian's father and his brother and Brian were probably not involved. Could another person have been involved? Maybe but we don't know enough details to point fingers and sometimes people point fingers to just get more attention. Why did they wait five hours after discovering Kendrick's body to call a medical examiner? Or they could have waited five hours to possibly have evidence, especially because he had already been sitting for 21 hours. It's kind of puzzling that they didn't call immediately they waited five hours so i'm not really for sure what their thought process was as to waiting five hours to call a medical examiner yeah usually whenever a body is found a medical examiner is called immediately i do find this very suspicious why was a medical examiner not called could they have been trying to hide something this would have definitely bought people more time but at the same time maybe they were in such shock of finding kendrick's body upside down rolled up in this mat and maybe students were in shock and the school was in shock and they really didn't know what to do and we like to think we would handle certain situations a certain way but until we're put in that situation we might not handle it in the best way possible there's multiple reasons why they did wait five hours it could go from as simple of not knowing what to do to covering something up we don't know enough details was this an fbi cover-up could be possible to be an fbi cover-up However, like you mentioned earlier, Brian's father and all of them were at a wrestling match during when Kendrick's death happened. I don't think he was necessarily involved. It could have still been an FBI cover-up. Maybe another student did have beef with Kendrick. They went to Brian's dad because he had resources to cover that up. But that kind of at the same time is a little bit of a stretch. It could go both ways. I still don't know enough information to make a proper conclusion. A coroner noted there was blunt force trauma to Kendrick's neck. Why is his death still ruled as accidental? The coroner that reassessed Kendrick's body was privately hired by the Johnsons to 
look at his cause of death again. The only thing that they noted as far as blunt force trauma to his neck was that there was a one to two inch bruise. There's no consistencies with an object hitting him or anything like that in the side of the neck or on top of the head. I think it's very accurate that the death is still ruled as accidental. But somebody could very easily have covered their tracks as far as that bruise. It could have been possible that they used a very small object or something to cover the tracks so that way it didn't seem as much as blunt force trauma. But it, it's kind of puzzling as to is it blunt force trauma? Is it not? Yeah. Still in between as to if his death is still accidental or if it could be a murder. Yeah, it is important to know the neck trauma. It could go either way because, like you said, it could have been a smaller object that somebody hit him with and maybe they they were in a fight, somebody had beef with Kendrick, they hurt him, it was taken a little bit too far, and so they put him in like that mat to kind of cover up their tracks and make it seem like an accident. But also at the same time, we, that could have been an older bruise, maybe from his previous fight with Brian. And obviously he won the previous fight with Brian. He did not die during that time. His death could have still been accidental. We don't know enough about if he was in another fight. I would feel like maybe he would have had more bruises, maybe some like bloody knuckles or something because usually when you get in a fight you do get like bloody knuckles, I mean your hair like ripped out and there was no like obvious blood on his shoes or his knuckles or like on his clothing and I feel like if he got in an accidental fight you would see more bruises and you would see more blood. Which theory do we believe to be the most likely true? It could go either way. I could see either situation because I can see how he did get into fights before and so also since the medical examiner wasn't called until five hours later they could have cleaned up the blood that was on him. However, I can also see that it could have very easily been an accident. Accidents happen all the time. You hear the strongest swimmer, they drown all the time. Just because you're a strong swimmer does not mean that you won't die from drowning. I think that can also apply to this story as well. And I think we need a lot more information and there's so many different sides to the story. For example, the fact that Brian and his family were at a wrestling match, well then that rules out that possibility. But then the fact that there was blunt force trauma on him is kind of weird and then the camera stopped working. The story is kind of all over the place and I think part of it is because there's so many different floating stories around and so many different people have changed the stories and everything. Somebody is not telling the truth. Either it's the parents, either it's other students, the high school. Somebody is not telling the truth of was this an accident? Or was this not? The theory that I most likely believe is that this was an accident just because of the fact of the evidence that we've seen. Yes, uh, Kendrick was almost as tall as the map, but that doesn't mean he still couldn't get stuck. And the fact that they found no blood outside of the mat, on his shoes, on the second pair of shoes, they only found blood inside of the mat and the corner ruling asphyxia as the cause of death which is very possible especially in your very very tight space like a mat asphyxia is very very possible and those mats are very very huge i'm pretty sure even a bigger dude could get stuck in that mat and probably would die as well 
that's the theory that I believe, although the murder side of it is also very believable. I just feel like that kind of lacks the evidence to point towards it. But I think the craziest theory that I've seen somebody suggest is that the parents stuffed him in the mat. Yeah, that is pretty wild. However, like I said, we can never rule anything out fully because cases like these have so many missing pieces of evidence. I feel like if the cameras were working, if if students actually would tell the truth and nobody had beef with anybody, then the truth would come out. I feel like what made a lot of people jump to Brian's father being involved, which he has been ruled out as not being involved, is because of Kendrick's beef with Brian. So I think this is definitely a learning lesson that freak accidents can happen. A lot of people want to try and make a tragic accident seem like somebody else murdered their kid and get justice for it. But in all honesty, freak accidents happen all the time. You can never rule out any possibility. Yeah, all theories in this are very, very light. Thank you for listening to another episode of Murder Mysteries and More. Remember, always keep your eyes open because you never know when someone's watching.